Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel, Aviation Tech and More, and thank you so much for visiting my channel today, guys. And if you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe, as you definitely do not want to miss my upcoming content that I have for you guys. I got two more videos coming tonight, definitely. Um, and then, I, I mean, I'm going to have some videos coming tomorrow about the, um, um, about how to receive email notifications on Schoology, um, Schoology Advanced Settings, and I'm also going to have a video on, um, how to replace an SATA hard drive. Now, I know I said I was going to be doing that video today, um, but things change, obviously, so today I'm only going to be doing the PATA hard drive, and that is going to be in this video. Now, let me quickly explain SATA and PATA. Alright, everyone, so SATA stands for Serial ATA and it is actually the most common form factor for a hard drive today. And what I mean by form factor of a hard drive is, is that it, um, a PATA hard drive and an SATA hard drive both have different connections. PATA have 30 little gold pins, which you will see in just a moment, because in this video I am doing the PATA hard drive replacement, and then, uh, uh, and then an SATA has, um, has just um, uh, gold sectors lined up, um, on like a black piece of plastic that just plugs into the computer and you will see that um, tomorrow when I do that video. SATA is also very much um, faster and newer than a PATA hard drive but you know some people still have old computers just like the one that you're about to see this one's from 2004 which is why it still has a PATA hard drive. Also I do want to um, I'm gonna let you guys know about something else in this video too um, before you go ahead and replace your hard drive um, if the reason why you're replacing it is because you think it's failing. Now, if you just want to upgrade it to like an SSD, that's um, a whole other video, and it's also a different story. But if you are um, if you are replacing your hard drive because you think it has failed, I highly recommend running a quick hardware diagnostic on your computer, which I will be showing you in this video as well, because hard drive problems can also... Um, um, uh, um, does actually be software problems. So um, a lot of people think their hard drive is failing and then it actually turns out to be a software problem. So you may want to run the diagnostic on your computer and if it says that your hard drive is fine, then an erase and reinstall should do the trick for you. All right, so on to my office desk again over here. This is the computer that I also showed you guys how to replace the RAM is. It's, it's RAM in, it's my 2004 Dell Latitude D610. This is the one that I refurbished um, quite a long time ago now. Not really. Just two weeks ago, I finished. Um, but anyway, and by the way, uh, there's also another video coming up to this channel about how to replace the processor. So if you're interested in that, um, if you're interested in that as well, um, please subscribe. All right. So on this particular um, laptop, the hard drive is located right under this black slot. There's this little pull-out um, thing right here, as you can see. And as soon as you pop that out, the hard drive will come out with it. Now you may ask me how I found that and how you can find the hard drive on your computer. And it is very easy guys. First let me explain um, that in order to find your hard drive you will probably need to um, be able to recognize some keywords. So the first two keywords to be able to find your hard drive are going to be strike zone. And as you can see um, it, it says it right here and the hard drive is located right underneath this. Now why is it strike zone? Uh, well I mean because you may be be confused. Why is that? Why would a hard drive be located under a piece of plastic that says strike zone? And that's because with older hard drives, not necessarily solid state drives now, but with older hard drives, it is um, it, it was very common for them to break by an extreme shock or something. I actually broke a hard drive on my computer just by putting my backpack down forcefully in class. And the reason why that breaks so easily is because it has moving parts. It has like an optical disc in the middle of the hard drive that's read by a needle. An old-fashioned hard drive is basically like your old record player. All right, now keep in mind um uh, now keep in mind also as I mentioned uh, as I mentioned previously Previously, SSDs will not suffer a failure like that, and because um, SSD, by the way, stands for Solid State Drive, and um, what that means is that there are zero moving parts. SSDs are magnetic hard drives, while hard while a hard, a traditional hard drive, you know, has that moving part. Now, um, 
Now, what I wouldn't recommend is to automatically just go and upgrade your computer to an SSD to prevent failures because there are still many advantages to a hard drive today. The major advantage to a traditional HDD is one, it's much cheaper, like you can find a uh, 250 gigabyte hard drive for a regular hard drive for like $44 and a 250 gigabyte SSD is like 180 guys so obviously SSDs are a lot newer and therefore they're much more expensive but also there's one more big advantage of a hard drive for heavy gamers and people that like to play games on their computers hard drives can hold a lot more capacity guys I haven't seen an SSD and a solid state I haven't seen that hold more than 500 gigabytes and we're up to like 4 terabytes of hard drive capacity now guys so don't automatically rule out buying a new computer with a traditional hard drive in it. it it just really depends what you're using the computer for now personally I don't do a lot of gaming and I really love my computer to be fast so I have upgraded all of my computers to solid-state drives besides one now why wouldn't I upgrade that computer and that's because that computer is still under warranty that computer will be featured in um, one of my upcoming videos so please stay tuned um, but if I were to replace it right now with it still under warranty, it would void the warranty. You can't um, replace parts with your own while your computer is still under warranty. All right, now back to the subject. So, you know, one of the keywords was strike zone. Now, um, HP um, strike zone is on that Dell. Um, uh, now, another one of my laptops is much easier to find where the hard drive is because it just says drive guard there and obviously hard drive, drive guard. It makes sense that the hard drive would be underneath it. Now, a lot of hard drives, um, to, now in order to replace a lot of hard drives, you need to screw off a piece of the back, just like for the RAM, how I had to take that little rectangular slit off of the back to access that. A lot of times you have to screw off a rectangular plate from the back as well, just like my HP Elite Book, which I will be doing a hard drive replacement video on that because that is an SATA. So you will see me taking the hard drive out of that, having to unscrew um, a plate off of the back. But back onto this computer here. So under the strike zone is that hard drive that I showed you. Um, the hard drive is very easy to take out. You can see it just has these two little ridges right here, and you just push on it a little bit with a little bit of force from your um, nail, and boom. The hard drive quickly comes out, and it's in this little cradle. Now, most of the time, guys, you will find two screws keeping the hard drive in its cradle, but in this case, I have already taken those out for the sake of this video, because sometimes it can be difficult to take them out, um, with, and you may need a very small screwdriver to do so, so just also um, just keep that in mind. So th the hard drive will then easily come out of its casing once you see that, and as you can see, this is actually a brand new, um, uh, um, a brand new HDD. So. Yeah, it's uh, just about a month old now. It's not actually a hard drive. As you can see, this is an SSD right there, and it's a 2.5-inch PATA. 2.5-inch would be like a laptop size. Um, desktop hard drives are always a lot bigger, but obviously they store a lot more. So when replacing your hard drive, guys, don't just type hard drive or something into Amazon when you're looking for a hard drive, guys. Do not do that. I get so many people emailing me saying, oh my god, the hard drive that just arrived at my house is so big. And that's why. They ordered a desktop hard drive and not a laptop one. And obviously, they obviously they they just won't fit in your laptop's case. They're way too big. So when looking for a new hard drive, what I recommend is always typing the word laptop or desktop into Amazon, and that'll make it very simple to narrow down which hard drive is right for you. If you would like me to make us uh, um, to make a separate video on how to find the right hard drive for your needs and your and your uh, particular computer, hit me up down below in the comments and let me know that that is the kind of content that you would um, like to um, see in the future. On this channel. All right, so back to um, so back to the hard drive replacement here. On a PATA hard drive, or at least in a laptop, I'm not sure about desktops. You will find this little adapter on it that are that is attached to the 30 pins. You will need to take this adapter off. Um, because the new hard drive that you order will not come with another one of these adapters. So you're going to need to use the adapter um, more than once. So right right now, I'm going to have to set my camera down, guys. I'm so sorry about that. But because you have to be extremely careful with this because you can bend some of the um, prongs if you don't take it off very evenly. So allow me one second to do that. So there it is. So as you can see, a PATA hard drive, as I mentioned earlier in the video, has those 30 pins. I hope you can see them. 
That's what a PATA hard drive looks like. And just in case you hear this, this is much less common. They're most like the, uh, um, they're almost always now called a PATA, but a PATA hard drive is also known as an IDE hard drive. And do not ask me what that means. I will, however, let you know in the comments once I look it up. So I will put what IDE stands for in the description of the video. Sorry, not the comments. So in the description, I will put that. So please check the description if you are interested. All right, so to put this back on, I'm gonna set my camera down again. So assumingly this is your new hard drive. Obviously this one's just two weeks old, so I'm not actually gonna be replacing it in this video. Um, but assuming this is your new hard drive, you're just gonna line this up with the um, 30 pins that are the closest to each other. These two other pins um, that are like right here that are away from the main set of pins, as you can see, there's this little space between them. Uh, just don't worry about them, guys. They shouldn't matter in your installation. So, you're just going to go ahead and be very careful, very, very careful when putting this back on. See, look at the mistake that I just did. See, you have to make sure that you put it on all 30 pins. As you can see, I missed the whole top layer, so I only put it on 15 of the pins. I mean, it's common to um, take a while to actually put um, one of these on. They are very difficult to put on. I hope you can see what I'm, what I'm doing okay, guys. I'm, I try to make the video quality as best as possible. All right, so there you go. Now I have successfully put back on the adapter. Um, I've successfully put the, the adapter back on. Now the last step to to successfully replacing your HDD or SSD, whichever one that you have, is to um, put it back into its uh, is to put it back into its cradle, into the uh, um, into yeah into its little. Um, um, into its little casing, if you will. So, I'm going to set my camera down one last time. And as you can see, this one has this little indentation here on where that adapter is supposed to go into. So it should be fairly self-explanatory um, to put your um, to put your SSD back into its case. It shouldn't take you that long at all. And 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 guys, it'll only fit one way. So I will just let you know of that. It'll only fit one way. So if it doesn't fit the way you put it in, just like it's not fitting that way, just turn your hard drive around and um, try it again. So give me one second here to get my hard drive back in here. There you go. So I got the hard drive back into its case, and as you see, it only fits one way. So you will never end up putting it back into the computer incorrectly, which would be, um, which is obviously very helpful because a lot of people, um, um, if you could put it in incorrectly. A lot of people would, uh, um, would you know, accidentally make that mistake. Um, and, uh, and and then they would think that they just bought the hard drive that they just bought. They would think their brand new hard drive was defective. I mean, uh, obviously, you know, we can't have that. So it's very nice that you can't put it in the um, in the wrong way. And uh, the same thing is for my other computer with the SATA hard drive that I will be making that video tomorrow. Um, the, uh, um, the same thing goes for that. You can't put it in the wrong way. So um, there's a little tip for you. All right, so now putting it back into the computer. So you'll go back to the area with the strike zone um, labeling, and you will simply, very simply, there shouldn't be any problems with this at all, just stick your hard drive back into its casing, and you should be good to go. Then all you need to do is to install a, an operating system onto it if it's a new hard drive, because hard drives that you order will come blank. And I will be doing a whole nother video on that in just a few minutes, guys. That was the video, that's the video I'm replacing um, for the SATA hard drive. So I was supposed to do the SATA hard drive replacement today. I'm not, I'm gonna show you how to install and uh, I'm gonna show you how to install an operating system onto a blank hard drive. It's extremely self-explanatory and it should not take you very long at all. Um, and if that if your hard drive already has stuff on it, you should be good to go. Now, um, for the last part of this video here, I'm going to show you quickly how to run that uh, how to run those diagnostics that I was talking about to see um, to see if your hard drive is uh, um, is failing or if it's probably a software problem. So the first thing you're going to do here is just press your power button. And you're just going to watch the screen the first time. You're not actually going to do anything the first time. You're just going to watch the screen and find out where the boot menu is. So as you can see up there, it very quickly said F12 for the boot menu to press F12. So then you're going to go ahead and just shut down your laptop here. There you go. So now the laptop is shut down. And then once you find out that key, 
you're just going to go ahead and turn it on while repeatedly pressing the F12 key to get it to go to that boot menu. And there it is. As you can see here, if I can uh, quickly turn the brightness up for you guys, I'm sure that would be of a great assistance to you when watching the video. Okay, that's actually as high as it goes. Um, but as you can see, it shows all of the sources where it can boot from. And then bio setup and diagnostics. So you're just going to click diagnostics and it should automatically just run the diagnostic on your computer. It should be very fast. And if anything fails, in this case it will because I know that hard drive is failing. Um, so you can see it's beeping and it's saying error was, detective, uh, error was detected for the hard drive. So I will be ordering a new hard drive for this computer and I will actually be um, actually replacing that hard drive. Obviously for the sake of this video I just put the failing hard drive back into it just to show you what you would do to replace the hard drive. Um, I just wanted to put this video out before I got the new hard drive because that could take like a week or something. It'll let you know that there was an error detected. You can try to retry it, see if it was a one-time failure. At this, uh, at, at this point here, it's not. Um, uh, uh, now, some hard drive issues can be resolved by an erase and reinstall, but it's very unlikely. Once your hard drive is about to fail, you really do need to, um, I, 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 you really do need to replace the disk, um, to uh, 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 um, to achieve your best result uh, for, um, for optimal results. For optimal results, you do need to replace the drive. Anyway, guys, I really do hope that you really enjoyed this video and that you found it helpful. If you would, please give it a thumbs up because that's going to keep me motivated and uh, keep me going and producing more content for you all. Um, don't forget to subscribe to the channel as well as you're not going to want to miss the great content that I have coming up for you. Thank you so much, and I'll catch you in the next video. Have